And welcome back to the Sabrina Marie Show. I'm your host, Sabrina Merriman, and we have a new guest today. Her name is Elizabeth Calder. Elizabeth is a brand marketing director and CEO of her own company. I'm so excited to dig in to hear all about your company. So tell me a little bit about what do you do? So I founded a strategic marketing company um, about a year ago. I've been in the marketing field for the past 25 years, running everyone else's company and making them rich. Um, during that time period where I was running everyone else's company, I started to identify things that I would do differently, even though I was the leader of the organization because it was not my organization. I wasn't the end all be all on all decisions. And so I didn't necessarily get to determine exactly how I wanted to treat my personnel internally and also exactly how I wanted to treat my clients. Um, so in branching off on my own, I have the ability to do brand development, brand strategy, campaign design, and experiential marketing execution for clients exactly the way that I intend to, to make sure that they get what they were paying for and then some. And then I also have the opportunity to make sure that my personnel comes to work feeling appreciated. Mm -hmm. They get up and they know that they're working um, for something that they believe in and working for an organization that believes in them and their abilities. That's amazing. So after 25 years, I'll say working in corporate, is that mm -hmm. considered corporate? Yes. To, to leave from corporate to entrepreneurship, that's a lot. Most people can't do that. So what made you, besides you know, seeing what you would do different, to give you that courage to, to step out and to do something like that? And did you have a strategy on exiting or did you exit from corporate America? So um, I worked at one organization for the better part of 17 years. I left that organization not, not sure where I was going to go next. I had another organization come out and to recruit me to ask me to run their company. So I went from CMO of one marketing agency, one national marketing agency, um, to the president and the COO of another marketing agency. And that organization was not being run very well when I was brought in. Um, I actually had clients at that new agency that came to me and they said, we've seen what you've done at this organization for the past six months, which has been incredible, amazing. Couldn't you just start your own agency so wow. that we could hire you directly? Were you nervous? Absolutely. It's not something I ever really thought that I wanted to do. Um, but when you're presented with opportunities, I feel like uh, God opens doors for you and you're supposed to walk through them. And that means you've got to grab your bootstraps and be a little brave and step out on faith. That's a big deal. Did you guys hear her? She worked in corporate America 25 years. And it's been one year since she started her new company. Can you tell us how your company is doing? Oh, the company's doing amazingly. I think uh, typically when you start your own organization and you start from the ground up, um, you have the opportunity to decide what it's going to look like, how it's going to feel, what you want to stand for. I have the luxury of having 25 years of relationships. And so my company is doing well, not just because I've started the company as the leader of the organization, but because I have a team of amazingly gifted brand strategists, creative designers. Did you start off like that? How did you have all, how did you have all these people behind you with a one-year company? Most of us have to be solo. It's true. I mean, in most cases, I think uh, most organizations do start that way. Um, I was fortunate enough to have worked with a number of individuals who believed in the vision that I had. And so when I was starting Phoenix, they were ready to come with me no matter where I was going to be, whether I was going to another organization or if I was going to start my own. They were going to be behind me because they believed in what I would be able to offer clients, but also how I would take care of them. And what's interesting is many of the people in my current organization on our leadership team have either been former employees or former clients. Oh my goodness. 
that's something major. That's a that's a big deal. So I can say for your company starting off, I it's not like a little mom and pop thing. It's a big organization. You have some good things going. Tell me a little bit more. <clears throat> what type of services that do you offer? So we are a full service marketing agency, and this is one of the things that makes us different from a lot of organizations out there. We actually do brand development and brand strategy. So some of the clients that we work with have a brand, they have a great idea, but they don't necessarily, they may have a great idea or a great product, um, but they haven't done any of the work to build the brand, the brand story, the design elements, the Maybe logo, because a lot so of people forth. don't know how. Right. Like for instance, I think that I have just a little bit of how to brand but not the full scope of it mm -hmm. and someone like you is very important to a person like me how could i afford someone like you you, just, you seem like you're so expensive well what's interesting is we work with a lot of different organizations so we work with fortune 500 companies fortune um, 500 um, yes we do some um national and international programming uh, for some large organizations one of the other things that we do is that we provide discounted services for um, charitable organizations. Um, when a charity or an NGO is doing something that's meaningful in the community, we give them big bang marketing prowess for yeah. very minimal investment. Um, especially, I think that it's important for our personnel, our designers, and our strategists. They work on things that are exciting and fun because we do entertainment and experiential marketing. Um, but oftentimes they feel like they need more meaning. And so we're able to achieve a balance between projects that are really um, large in scope um, for brands that are big and recognizable, um, but also they get to balance that with working on things that are about changing the world and making the community a better place. And that's important for their, their, you know, their quality of life. And their I noticed that's important for you as well. I did notice when I did look at your bio, that you were into some great things like the Mantra Dimes. Could you tell us a little bit about that? I love the fact that you're um, on the board. You're the, the president of the board? I'm the vice chair of the, of, of the board and I also lead the um, March of Dimes committee for marketing and outreach. Um, March of Dimes is incredibly important to our family. Um, I've actually, as um, I'm a member of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, so mm -hmm. I have been raising money for the March of Dimes for 25 years now. 25? Wow, um, that's commitment. Yes, and, and it's an you have to love it. You to definitely do, that. do. You definitely do. Um, my um, though, my son, who was born eight years ago, was actually a triplet, Ooh. and he was the sole surviving triplet. Oh, um, but it. his life was actually saved by research that was funded by the March of Dimes. Wow! And so, even though I had been raising money for the organization for so long, it changed my perspective on how involved I should be. I owe my son's life to them. That's amazing. That's really amazing. That's something I didn't even know. That's really amazing. Um, and it gives a different meaning to it. Mm -hmm. And to be able to um, market it the way that you do and to put out, to bring your talents and things forward, that's, that's wonderful. That's really great. Thank you. So what made you decide to, uh, to choose this type of business? You started 25 years ago working for someone else. How did you get into the business? Did you go straight from college? Or that, that was your career path? Like, Well, you know, initially I, I, I went to um, undergrad and my plan was actually to go to law school. I thought I was going to be an attorney. And so I took my LSAT and I did very well. And so I knew I was just going to go to law school and that was the plan. Um, but before I graduated from my undergrad, I was offered the opportunity to get my MBA, my Master's in Business Administration, for free. And I was for like, free? Free. No, nobody turns down free. Right. So I said, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and get this MBA, and my LSAT score is good for three years. This is going to take me two, so when I'm done with this, I'll just go to law school. But you know, when you're a broke college student, after those two years, I just needed some money. And so I got my first job in marketing out of grad school. And so my, I'm probably one of the few people that does what they went to school for. So I never went on to get my, my law degree. I ended up going straight into a marketing program position, running um, urban programming for uh, a marketing agency that was based here in Maryland. So did you love it? 
I did. Okay. I did. So one, it was uh, it gave me the opportunity to be very successful, right? So I was running a you know major uh, programming, and at that time it was for spirits. So I was doing things for um, a brand called Alize. I did a national marketing program for them, which was fantastic, and that was what I did out of the gate. And from there, it just spawned into more and more opportunities to be able to move from that agency to another agency where I was running much larger programs, and then it just continued. That second agency, I, I actually spent 17 years there. Actually, we do represent a lot of large organizations, Fortune 500 companies, recognizable brands. We do a lot of programs that you might recognize that are out there. Um, but at the same time, we also take our services and we work with non-for-profit organizations and we offer discounted services for them so that we can create a balance for our employees to work on things that are incredibly important that are about changing the world, but also things that are out there that are recognizable and, and, um, and, and that sort of thing. But in addition to that, we also work with a lot of emerging brands. And so it's important for us to be able to work with brands that don't exist yet and help them to kind of grow. So you can work with me? I will absolutely love to work with you. Oh, but you we heard that on camera, guys. I absolutely love to work with you. But you know, it, you know, oftentimes if there is an organization that is small and it's coming and we believe in the trajectory that it's on, you know, we'll look at one, providing a discounted services package so maybe you don't get all the same bells and whistles as some of these larger organizations, um, but you also get um, a focused team that's working on, on your behalf and then we also provide um, flexible um, payment plans for those organizations as well so that they can get big bang marketing prowess um, from a minimal investment and then also with um, flexibility to make sure that you're able to pay for the services in a way that it aren't going to affect your ability to run your business. So Elizabeth, I'm telling you right now, I need a payment plan. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe you, but 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 of course I'll give you. Listen, one. you work for Fortune 500 companies. I need a payment plan. <laughs> Already know off the bat. <laughs> well, you know what? I want to also find out. Have you ever had a client that you did want to work with, or you refused to work with? Absolutely. You know, the thing is, um, I think it's important for people to know entrepreneurs to understand that all money isn't good money. And so you have to be able to make sure that you're principled in what you represent. And so it's whether, I think we were talking about earlier, the way that I want to service clients and what I want clients to get from us and the way that I want my employees to be treated. Um, there are organizations that are not, um, that don't align with our company ideals or my personal ideals. Um, so in that case, you're talking about money that's not necessarily good money if it makes you compromise your principles. Mm, that's um, important. And I think also for organizations, if they feel like they can treat the personnel that works on our team as if they're not people, then that's also not good money as well. Um, our, our team, they're, they're what makes the world go round. And so we won't allow um, organizations to either belittle them or make them feel like their contribution is not valued. So let me ask one more question about your team. You started this business one year ago. You had people follow you. How big is your team? So our leadership team has 10 folks on it. And each Whoa. of those 10 people have a one team year, under them. Um, <laughs> and then based on our execution programming, so we have a lot of strategic programming. So that puts us probably around 40 folks of strategists and designers and whatnot. Um, our personnel uh, spans the country right now. Um, our VP of Consumer Insights is out of San Diego. Um, our VP of um, our VP of Community and Consumer Engagement is out of Ohio. Um, my creative director is actually in Venezuela. Wow, that's amazing! That's amazing that you can pull together such a large team in different places like that. That's really amazing. So, if you have one piece of advice for a new person who's starting entrepreneurship, who's been in corporate America as long as you have which is a big, scary thing to do to change over something that's not certain. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice would you give that person? Because I remember a young lady asked me, she was moving from one state to another, and she was transferring her 401k plan. 
and she said that she wanted to take the money and invest it into the business. And I asked her, did she have a backup plan for her cost of living? And she did not. So I, I suggested that she did not take all the funds and just roll the dice. What do you suggest for someone who's leaving corporate America, the steps that they should follow to make sure that they're okay financially at home as well? I think it's important to make sure that you're okay. But I think everything that I've probably learned that's very important in my life, I've learned from watching my mother from being a very little girl. And one of the things that my mother did, she was incredibly brave. She would take risks, but they were calculated risks because she was doing everything to make sure that we could have a better life. She would literally pick up her four little girls and move 3,000 miles away and start her whole life over again mm -hmm. in order to give us more opportunity. And so there's something about that bravery that's important, but she planned everything meticulously. So it's not just um, stepping out and doing something without having a plan. You have to have a plan. That's amazing. So planning is the key, and I definitely believe that. Um, I used to say to anyone who asks me about anything that I do in business, I always tell them I'm usually two, head, two years ahead of the game, mm -hmm. meaning that I've already started planning out what I want to do, and it's usually two years after I start writing out my whole plan, and I usually start off by what, when, where, who, and I, how, mm -hmm. you know, on my, on my personal list. And then, then I start to answer my own questions and then I start to break it down and then I start to go to each little detail part. So it takes a long time. You know, it's me. interesting that you say that. It's one of the services that we provide. So we, do, I think I mentioned that we do brand strategy and brand development and then we do campaign design and then experiential execution. But in the brand strategy component, we do strategic planning with our clients. So we'll tell you, you know, especially at the beginning of a brand, what your brand should accomplish a thousand years from now if you do everything that you're supposed to do. But then we dial you back to say, okay, well, what are you doing at year one versus year five versus year 10 that's gonna deliver the thing that you're trying to accomplish in a thousand years? Well, Elizabeth, it's been awesome talking to you. I want you to take the opportunity to give out your information, how someone can contact you to hire you for your services. You can find us at www.phoenixlmg.com. That's Phoenix Lifestyle Marketing Group. You can also find us on social media at Phoenix LMG on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thank you, Elizabeth, for coming in and interviewing with us. And I really appreciate you. Thank you for having me, Serena. Thank you for inviting me out to your show. It was awesome. Well, there you go. You can contact Elizabeth Calder at Phoenix Lifestyle Marketing Group at any time. And I want to thank you once again for tuning in to the Sabrina Marie Show. We'll see you soon. And remember, never let them see you sweat. Amen.